So the physics of space flight, whether it's ballistic or orbital, is somewhat extreme. And it takes a lot of people to pull that mission off. So whoever rolls into town and tries to set up an operation in Scotland is going to need a lot of people to help them pull that mission off. So from an economic standpoint, I think it's a where's Chris? It's a win-win. On the accident, some other issues going on. And in that time frame, you get to be pretty darn good close friends with all the astronauts that have flown in space. And you hear all the stories. You call, come from similar backgrounds. Spent a lot of time sitting around, socializing. So when I went out to the launch pad to go fly, I honestly really thought I had it all wrapped up. I had it nailed. I knew exactly what was going to happen, what it was going to feel like. And somewhere, and you're sitting on your launch pad for four hours out there, joking around, getting bored. And then someone actually really does talk on the radio and say, 10, 9, 8. You know, they do that whole countdown thing. And I don't know whether it's because it's ingrained in your, bread, in your head since you're a little kid or what, but all of a sudden I was like, holy smokes. I think I'm going to go to space. <laughs> and uh, the main engine's light, and six seconds later, the solids light off, the bolts blow, and you go, you know, it's riding seven and a half million pounds of thrust. And I was, I remember distinctly thinking, holy smokes, this is not like any stories I had heard before. You know, it's totally amazing because it's real, it's physical, and you feel it, and you see it, and everything that goes with it. And I have to say, everything from that point for the next two weeks, everything that's in space fit in that same category of, man, I shouldn't have been nearly that cocky to think that I knew it was going to happen. And you want the little bit about right after? Yeah. Okay, so this, this part is the uh, what Michelle calls the welcome to space moment. Again, it's about being cocky and me being stupid about thinking that I understood everything. Uh, probably 12, 14 minutes after launch, uh, we do this kind of maneuver with the the space shuttle where it basically does a, a loop or a flip on its back and uh, coming down the back side of the, the flip nose is pointed straight down at the earth and we had launched late in the day so we flew into darkness and we're now out over Europe somewhere I think it was Spanish area got all my engines fixed up uh, took my helmet off and I'm looking out this window hanging you know, zero G looking out this looking at this incredible sight of a beautiful city at night. I don't know what city it was. It's called Sevilla. And uh, thinking, man, this is so cool. And right then, this shooting star goes by. And I had, I was totally, I was floored. It's like, oh, the shoot, they're, of course, yeah, they're down there. You know, they're below you, because the, they only glow in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is below you. And I had never made that mental leap of thinking that, oh yeah, shooting stars are below you now. So that was this moment of, yep, I am definitely not on planet Earth anymore. <laughs>